I don't know if it was because of some human brilliance or an action of the Holy Spirit. I'll let you be the judge of that. But the fact that the church chooses John's gospel for Holy Thursday, I think is divinely inspired, in my opinion. Holy Thursday is a celebration of the Lord's Supper, uh, believing that the, that is the time that Jesus takes the Passover meal, puts his own spin on it, and institutes the Eucharist, what we believe is the Blessed Sacrament, the source and summit of our sacramental life as a church. And then instead of using the readings that refer to Jesus doing that at the Last Supper, the church says exclusively we're going to use John's gospel that focuses on Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. And it kind of begs the question, what does washing of feet have to do with the Eucharist? Well, if we have to ask the question, it probably means that we haven't fully understood what the Eucharist is really all about. And that's not our fault necessarily. It's easy for us to focus on one or two attributes of something at the expense of seeing the bigger picture. So as a church, we emphasize many different things about the Eucharist. Early on, we are saying that it was something that becomes God, and it is the real presence of God, and we believe that it is the source of energy, sacramental grace that we receive that nourishes us, continues to sustain us, heals us, makes us whole. And there's a certain truth and beauty to all that. But unfortunately, sometimes we focus on it as a thing. We line up solemnly in the communion line to receive this thing. We have all sorts of rules and regulations about who can receive it and when they can receive it and what it takes to make it come into existence. Lots of stuff about a thing. But we also acknowledge that the Eucharist is about relationship. And sometimes it's hard to see how it's effectively a relationship. We know that we come together as a community, and that's part of a relationship, and that's the thing that we're missing now, that we don't have public mass. But it goes beyond that. So when, John, or when Jesus washes the feet of the disciples, he asks them, do you know what we're doing here? And odds are they're saying, yeah, we know. And he's saying, if you understand this, blessed are you if you do it. He's not talking explicitly about washing feet, although that's not a bad starting point. What Jesus is trying to address is the fact that the disciples are very uncomfortable with what he's doing. And they're supposed to be asking the question, why are they uncomfortable? Why are they not allowing Jesus or wanting Jesus to touch their feet? What human hangups are getting in the way? Their own embarrassment about their feet, their cultural standards of judgment, Maybe they figured that as the Messiah or as their good friend, he shouldn't be doing that. There's all sorts of things that are in the way that really they should be contemplating to say, why are they not allowing the intimacy to occur? Peter's the one that speaks up for the rest, but it's a standard human condition that we don't want this to occur. Every Holy Thursday when we celebrate it and we have the washing the feet, we have a hard time coming up with people that are willing to have their feet washed. And they was given far more opportunity to prepare than the apostles were. So even though people said we are missing mass, no one said, well, I missed the, missed the foot washing on Holy Thursday. So that hang up still exists. So the question is, why? Are we paying attention to what relationship is all about? Relationship is about intimacy at various levels, and it's not always romantic intimacy as we tend to think of when we hear the word intimacy, but when it, when it comes to getting to know someone, to be in relationship with someone, we end up having to drop our guard, dropping our facades, allowing our vulnerability to be exposed, accepted, and treated with reverence by the other. And when we do that, amazing things happen. We start to encounter how God is present in the midst of the most unusual, the most uncomfortable of circumstances, because God is everywhere to begin with. And it is our own human bias that prevents us from seeing it. Father Ronald Rabb is a priest in, in a, I think in 
Portland area, and he has an inner city church. And he talks about how he has a, an outreach to the homeless people in the community. And there were nurses that were part of his parish that were doing a clinic. So homeless people could come in and get their medical needs looked after. And there would be homeless people that had shoes that didn't fit or hadn't changed their socks and they have their needs of their feet to be cared for. And so these nurses are trained professionals, but they're still having to suppress their gag reflex because these poor individuals don't have the exposure to proper hygiene. On top of the fact that they often don't have uh, the medication. If they have diabetes and they don't have insulin care, this is a life-threatening condition to have their feet or their foot wounds taken care of. And so they're having to suppress their natural gag reflex, but at the same time, they know how important this is. And it's not simply an act for the sake of letting these people know that they're loved, but to instill in them the importance that they do seek out the care that they need, which is a life-saving remedy. That is an intimacy that is required by just logic, but it's also an intimacy required of the love of the heart. We need to let go of our hesitancy, our baggage, before we can truly let go of our pride, let go of our standards, to expose our intimacy with others, and to share it more fully. So, yes, the Eucharist is a wonderful gift, but there's so much more to this relationship with one another and with God. So even though we are in lockdown mode and we can't gather as a community, if we think we're missing out on the bigger picture, it just means we don't have our eyes open wide enough.